So is my car's radiator blocked? You've probably got some sort of symptoms that range from overheating to erratic engine temperatures, maybe noises, maybe you're getting no heat inside the car. So the first question that people often ask is, is it the radiator and is the radiator blocked? So in this video, we're gonna look at that question, is your radiator blocked? But we're gonna look at the more likely causes of these problems, areas that you should do first to check and how really you can check to see if your radiator is actually block So firstly, I have to say, despite the amount of articles out there that imply that radiators often get blocked and it's a big problem, it's not a massive problem. If you use a decent coolant in your water that goes into the radiator, decent water, you change it at the correct frequencies, there's very little scope for sludge or anything building up inside the engine cooling system. So if there's a leak in the head gasket, it is possible, it's unlikely, but it is possible that you get some of the gunk from inside the engine, the engine oil and all that starting to mix. But again, that's still unlikely to block the radiator itself. The channels in the radiator are quite large. The bore sizes are reasonable. So is your radiator blocked? Let's assume that there are some bits of gunk inside your radiator that's affecting the flow of the water around it. Well, if you have a thermal imaging camera, you can just point that at the radiator and that will show you where those hot spots are in the radiator. So if it looks fairly evenly warm, you can assume that there's decent flow throughout the radiator. If you've got some cool spots, then it is possible then that some of the channels inside the radiator have become blocked and they're starting to degrade. So in most cases where I've seen this happen, it's down to corrosion of the radiator components itself. The rust has started to blow itself out. It's restricted the channels and other parts of rust has started to collect in that. And it's really started to form a dam inside. So again, that's not usually completely restricting the flow of water or coolant through the radiator, but it can create those hot spots and those other issues. So to actually check the radiator, if you just take the hose off the bottom and open up the top of the radiator, you'll be draining the water out of the engine. If you then put water into the top of the radiator, it should flow through and come out the bottom at the same rate that you pour it into the top. If that's not happening, then there is obviously some sort of restriction or blockage there and get that radiator replaced. But what are the more common problems for these overheating issues inside the car? Well, the radiator system is generally shut off for most of the time while the car is warming up and getting up to temperature. So it's reliant on the thermostat, a valve that opens and closes at a set temperature to allow the coolant to flow through the radiator. So that valve itself can start to stick, the thermostat can start to play up and open at much higher temperatures than it should. That will typically give you erratic temperature readings inside the car. The coolant may flow for periods of time and then it might stop completely. So if that's the case, then it's probably the thermostat and the valve that controls the flow of water into the radiator. The other issue that it could be is the water pump itself. So water pumps in a lot of cars is just made of plastic. It's been doing 100,000 miles with the engine and these components will start to degrade and start to break down in time. So if that happens, that's going to affect the flow of water through the engine. And if you do notice the engine temperatures getting up to those really high levels, that's not something you should ignore. Stop the car, allow it to cool down, make the rest of your journey in a series of short bursts, allowing the car to cool down between those bursts. You don't want the engine getting too hot. That will have a host of other problems that you'll have expensive repair bills to try and fix and sort out. Don't drive the car when it's in that red zone of the temperature gauge, that's just asking for trouble. But do get the water pump checked, particularly on a lot of, say, Volkswagen models where they've used these plastic water pumps, they often degrade over time. So replacing them with metal versions really guarantees a long lifespan and supreme reliability of that part in the future. So the heater inside the car generally is connected to the coolant system and it uses the hot water that's going round the engine into the radiator and it blows air through a radiator that that flows through to allow warm air to come into the car. So if you're not getting hot air into the car, that can indicate a problem with the overall coolant flow or maybe just the circuits that affect the flow of coolant 
into the heater matrix for the car itself. If you drain the coolant out, take a moment to just inspect the coolant. Is it discolored? Does it appear to have sludge or bits of rust or metal particles in it? If it does, that can indicate you might have another problem. It's a good idea just to get the engine fully flushed out before you start putting more coolant in, because otherwise you're just going to be saving up that problem for some future date. I've got another video that I'm preparing at the moment about coolant. So by the time you watch this, it may well be out already. So stay tuned to the channel if you haven't done so. We'd love you to subscribe so you don't miss out on this content. It is important to choose the right coolant for your engine. It can have catastrophic effects where you start getting corrosion inside the engine just because you've made bad decisions when it comes to coolant. Never put tap water in your engine. I see that done a lot. So don't ever top it up with tap water. Always use the correct fluids, either a pre-mixed coolant that goes into the engine or deionized, filtered, or quality water that doesn't have all of the elements that you would get from tap water or mineral water. So thanks for watching. Please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video that I've lined up.